Otherwise, uncredited images in this presentation are mine. That's a shot of South County Dublin from, or well, South City Dublin from North Dublin. Okay, cool. So, postmortems. So, I've been thinking a lot about postmortems post recently. Uh, I've been running an internal uh, study group in Microsoft uh, around various aspects of SRE culture and postmortems uh, most recently. Um, I'd say that PMs are, in some sense, really theoretically important for the SRE discipline in the sense that if all an SRE team did was to run postmortems for their service and follow up the action items each time if there was some kind of platonic SRE team that just did that, their service would asymptotically approach more and more reliability over time. Now, obviously, that's not the way it really is and so on, but it, it's an indicator of how theoretically important the post-mortem action loop is. Uh, it's good that we have a, a large number of people who are pushing forward the state of the art uh, in this environment, in this situation. Um, John Oswald, obviously uh, foremost amongst them, I would say. Uh, there is a particular nuance to the act of postmortems in the cloud industry, which is even more important than default SRE activity, say, where you're supporting a service which doesn't necessarily have a cloud angle or is a strongly important internal service. And the practice of postmortems in the cloud industry in particular, uh, as they say, Microsoft runs on trust. Uh, the cloud runs on trust to a large extent as well. Externally facing postmortems, which is kind of what this talk is about, published by cloud providers and cloud consumers as well, are an incredibly valuable opportunity to establish trust, uh, an incredibly uh, valuable opportunity to destroy that trust as well. Uh, and these typically have directly measurable business effects if you have a trust relationship, an ongoing trust relationship uh, with a provider, uh, then you usually attach to that provider in some way, purchase further services from them, and so on. So actually, this, this kind of stuff does really matter on some kind of business level. But it also matters, I think, which is one of the interesting things about postmortems, it also matters on a uh, on an emotional level, that you're uh, establishing trust, that you are being, hopefully, transparent about what you're doing. Uh, it's also an opportunity, or I guess public-facing uh, postmortems are also an opportunity for cloud uh, consumers to talk about what went wrong when they were doing their thing. Maybe a bit more of a limited audience, uh, or maybe more specialized audience, but it, it's still a, a, a trust relationship establishment at the end of the day. So, all of that said, let's look at how good we are as an industry at this and at establishing trust. Uh, and before I go into the detail, I would just like everyone in the room to note the disclaimer there, where I say that I am not singling out any provider uh, I understand being in the industry myself, everyone has day jobs, they're just trying to do their best, and so on and so forth. Uh, I do not approve or disapprove of any service product company, entity, et cetera, mentioned in this talk, so uh, contents may have settled in transit, I think. So, let's, uh, let's have a look at this really detailed slide. So, as Partial inspiration for this talk, I went to the ever excellent uh, Dan Liu's uh, site and found some arbitrary subset of the public postmortems uh, that uh, he gathered in order to illustrate or in order to collect just public postmortems and the interesting things that they tell us about what's going on. Now, uh, I further subsetted this selection by picking, I think, every third one. In that list, uh, I just collected a handful in order to see what the trends were in the, in the industry. Another place to get your postmortems from, by the way, is sreweekly.com. Anyone look at SRE Weekly? Yeah, it's pretty cool. 
Uh, so, I took a random, hopefully random-ish, uh, arbitrary is a better word. I took an arbitrary sampling of postmortems and read them with an eye to looking for consistency across the industry at what we do in our public-facing uh, postmortems. Uh, perhaps some entities mentioned some things, other entities mentioned other things, and so on. The very first point or very first column I want to uh, talk about is the timeline column. So the definition of the timeline column is the number of timestamps that were mentioned, not even connected to activity, just mentioned in a string in the public postmortem. Some of these public postmortems are, hey, this stuff went down and then it ended here, all's fine. And some postmortems are, the person logged in, they tried to resolve the incident, they brought the other people in, everyone ran around with their hair on fire, and finally everything went okay. I would say that probably, as professionals, you are more impressed by transparency and more detail in what happened, even though that, that's, that's uh, it's kind of a vulnerability to reveal those kinds of internal details about what you're doing. But it's interesting that we see a total range from it started and it ended all the way through to uh, 22 timeline points of separate events that have happened. So if you want to uh, reproduce my work, you can load up the postmortems linked from Dan Liu's page and uh, search for colon or dot or whatever. So another interesting column is impact. So describing what impact is, is actually a pretty hard thing in a postmortem for a couple of reasons. Uh, one reason is you know, it's, it's because the people responsible for constructing the postmortem are often people who work with the technology directly and not necessarily with the user directly, or there's some chain between user and infrastructure which makes it non-trivial to go, this happened and therefore these number of uh, customers were affected. Uh, the statements here about what happened, however, across these postmortems run the gamut from uh, stuff happened, things were down. Yes, that's true. Uh, through to 25% of HTTP requests to this particular destination between 1307 and 1309 failed. Okay, that's cool, like you've got, actually got some kind of accurate figure uh, or assessment of what's happening. But kind of even better is the following customers whose names began with A through K suffered an average latency pel penalty of 200 MS between the following times. So connecting to the user is, is hard, uh, and, and we see this reflected in my completely arbitrary bucketization of the assessment of impact in this. Hopefully you will uh, disagree. So, okay, another important column, preventative steps. Actually, in a post-mortem, preventative steps are what you want to see, right? Oh, oh dear, this thing happened. How can we make sure it never happens again? And it is uh, interesting that most of the post-mortems that I found, public-facing post-mortems that I found, uh, had the preventative steps uh, bit. That is good. Uh, I think the key point here being that postmortems connected to a continual improvement loop. We want to, we, re we really want to be thorough and understand what the steps that we're taking, which will help never happen again. Closely coupled with that, and a thing that I didn't actually expect when I went through, is the notion of follow-ups to a postmortem. So many postmortems public-facing postmortems I have read are all like, we are totally going to do X, we are absolutely going to do Y, yep, no problem, we've got Z absolutely under control. And then a year later, you come back to the postmortem and you read it and you go, have you got X under control? Did you do Y? What's happening with Z? And in fact, uh, the difficulty from the transparency angle with the public postmortems is, is really that in the public postmortem we're saying, we're going to do this, trust us. And then sometimes, 
like a lot of the time, we don't actually follow up either by extending the original postmortem in some publicly viewable way or by posting uh, any information about this. It's difficult to expose the internal workings of an organization and externalize them in a, in a usefully frank way. And I would guess that's why many organizations do not, in fact, bother. So I, I care both as a cloud consumer and as a cloud provider because I know, you know, because I work in the industry, that it's so easy to start off enthusiastic about fixing these things. Oh, we will totally fix this. And then a couple of days goes by, teams being difficult about whether or not they're going to do this in the roadmap, and the energy just drains out of the situation. Maybe it does get done eventually, but it's like two quarters or three quarters or something like that afterwards. So unless you go back to your postmortem and publish that, in fact, you've actually done these things, a postmortem is it's really an aspirational document. So special kudos to the transparency of GitLab here, who uh, perhaps unsurprisingly published their postmortem bugs, and you can click through in real time and see what's happening and so on. So that is fantastic from a transparency point of view. So another thing you'd like to see in your postmortems is an understanding of root cause, I try to avoid that word or that phrase for various reasons, uh, the uh, understanding of largest contributing factor or factors to uh, an outage. Perhaps unsurprisingly, uh, all of the, almost all of the postmortems that I found had some kind of statement about what went wrong, some analysis, uh, ranging in detail a lot across the industry. So some blog posts were uh, masterful tales in following a single thing down through many of the stacks, and some of them were, oh yeah, we had some human error and we fixed it. So it, it, it would also be good, uh, I think, and we'll get to that in a moment, but it would be good to have some commonly held idea of what, to what extent you should go when you're describing root causes, largest contributing factors, uh, et cetera, to outages. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's kind of difficult to, to know what you should expect. Uh, graphs, pictures, apparently they're good for understanding. Uh, for an industry that loves graphs so much, uh, see one of my previous talks at SRE Economia, uh, and monitoring dashboards and so on and so forth, we have a very surprising lack of direct pictorial evidence of what happened and uh, uh, giving people the ability to, to understand, again, with extra transparency, what the graphs were doing at the time of the outage, and so on. We're generally pretty bad at including them in postmortems. Other postmortems have diagrams because they're going into an explanation of what the overall system architecture is uh, when the, the problem occurred, and they're also useful, but I didn't, didn't mark them on, on this one. Uh, and finally, a thing which I noticed about halfway through the parsing of these public postmortems, which is the number of abject personal apologies from CEOs, CTOs, VPs, etc., saying, I cannot accept that we have done this. I'm so sorry to our customers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, that's good. And I, I think it speaks to your personal character as a CEO, CTO, VP, blah, 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 that you are prepared to publicly say, you know, sorry. On the other hand, reading the postmortem a year later, like I actually don't care. I care more that you had the action items and that you drove them to completion. And uh, as a result, I, I mean, I, I, don't wanna I don't really want to see the person say, you know, you've let your school down, you've let your parents down, but most of all, you've let yourself down. Um, I am an adult, I accept that this kind of thing happens and that stuff gets reprioritized, et cetera. But really, it's the transparency about following up on the action items, which I think is, is key here. And it's all about prioritization in that sense. So I think stepping back from the uh, inflammatory table of awfulness for a moment, 
uh, the larger point is, is that the consistency, it's actually pretty terrible here, right? Uh, the postmortems that would increase my faith that an, an issue was uh, recognized and getting proper attention are probably the ones with the more detail in them. Um, and that seems to be an, an issue for many organizations. Uh, as a consumer of cloud services, I would really like to see way more transparency. I would really like to see way more timelines, more accurate ex explanation of impact, directly trackable action items, more pictures and graphs, and probably fewer abject personal apologies. Flipping that around, on the other hand, as a cloud provider, I'd really like to know what the customers care about in the sense that in a particular failure, I often have, uh, apart from certain circumstances, only a, a relatively inaccurate proxy about what the, the customers really do care about. Okay, a, a help page was inaccessible. How important to the customer was that at that point? Or like, I couldn't log into my bank. Like that's a higher level of, of uh, impact. And so having some notion of that so I could understand what it was most relevant for me to expose to the customers would be useful. I'd also like to increase people's confidence that uh, we were professional about how we conducted this incident and how we drove things to resolution, et cetera. But I'd like to do that without specifically publishing an individual's name or individual's names for all, all the obvious reasons, I guess. And to some extent, maybe that's some of the, uh, some of the uh, reason that's driving CEOs and VPs and so on to put their names on things because uh, they're a, a public target in some ways, I guess. But I'd also like to be able to publish progress without having to externalize internal tracking systems which are not ready to be externalized just yet. Like, I don't want to give a link to the internal thing uh, as is. I want to be able to kind of uh, take that material and externalize it in some well-understood form uh, without having to commit to uh, a lot of work. Another thing in postmortems is that as John Allspot and uh, also as Jessica DeVita say, postmortems kind of live in a, uh, a liminal space, a halfway space, where they're both socially constructed documents and they are technical documents. Uh, socially constructed documents uh, which talk about, in some cases, I, I read a few postmortems that don't turn up on the list, which are uh, very, very blamey indeed, like quotes, the IT team didn't know how to do backups, finger wag, close quotes, like as simple as that. But in fact, organizational change, uh, which often is related to the cause of an outage or a contributing factor to an outage, uh, doesn't tend to turn up in postmortems. Like, it's actually quite plausible if you think about your own history in the industry. Well, they brought in a new VP for engineering two months ago, and as a result, loads of people were in chaos and didn't know who they were reporting to or what they were doing, and so we couldn't reach the person who knows how subsystem X works when it all went down. You don't see that in a public postmortem, generally. In the uh, SRE workbook, uh, we worked on trying to externalize one of our postmortems inside, which was inside the old firm, which was uh, more organizational than most. And I, I hope uh, enough of that has survived to be interesting. Uh, a related topic, of course, is, is leadership change rather than just organizational change in the, the broadest sense. And. Uh, I guess looking at all of the diff different uh, incentives and all of the different motivations pulling at the humble public postmortem uh, document, like is there a meeting of minds possible at all here? Like is, is some improvement on the table? Could we do something on an industry basis? I think uh, stepping back and modeling customer empathy, uh, I'm really saying, how can we kind of escape out of this mess? Because like, this isn't great for the customer. Certainly not as good as it could be. And so, I have a proposal. 
So my eldest child once said that the implicit uh, motivation or the implicit plot turn behind every single children's film is, quote, but by working together, end quote, and that's how we get things done. So I have a proposal that we work together. So let's change this by doing the following things. We'll put together a consortium. It will make a standardized format for PMs. And the format will include tick marks or, you know, columns so that you have guaranteed follow-up, so that you have guaranteed graphs or pictures, et cetera, where it's appropriate. The structured format doesn't matter so much. Uh, I've, I've written one that you can look at later on. The thing that matters is making sure that the baseline of the postmortems across the industry increases transparency more. We would also, in this consortium, this wonderful fairyland far away, we would centralize the collection, the curation, and the distribution of these. Uh, we would own and maintain this, this format and the agreed set of things that should occur in postmortems. And we'd also make a search engine over this corpus because uh, accessible primarily by consortium members because actually that would be a lot of very interesting data and we'll go on to some of that in a moment. Now, where are we? Okay, so if we did this thing, what would we get? And actually, I would argue, we'd get a whole load of things, a whole load of very useful things, actually. So for a cloud platform provider, cloud provider, we'd actually learn what our customers have trouble with uh, because they would write postmortems about them. Another stimulating effect, actually, of this kind of approach is that we would also encourage a number of providers to write more postmortems, sometimes for things that are quite important that don't actually have any kind of public-facing document at all. We'd also look at what approaches the customers tried in order to resolve those issues. That would be valuable data for the cloud providers. Uh, get a chance to learn best practices from each other, for which we would have to be vulnerable enough for all of us to admit that we're not the best, which would be hard, but maybe we could get there. And we'd also share this commonly agreed set of standards for what PMs should include, which would raise the baseline for the industry. And uh, help with anonymization and legal review and other kind of meta issues with postmortems that in, from our I guess, more technical perspective in, in some ways are meta issues for postmortems, but are actually incredibly vital day-to-day -day issues. Uh, we could even implement a standardized way of doing it via some kind of secretariat in the consortium, as long as we all agreed what the things were we do when we anonymize and when we take out detail and do legal review and so on. For cloud consumers, we would also see what the other people are doing you could subscribe to a feed, get your postmortems on a regularly published basis, and share best practices as above. Researchers would have an incredibly interesting corpus to work on of well-formatted, well-structured data, which would be interesting from a timeline point of view alone. Treasure trove, human factors research, on-call situations, and so on. And then the industry, in some sense, I'll hand wave what that means for the moment, uh, would have a, the, a, a common format that would itself attract tooling, stimulate understanding of postmortems in a particularly structured way, uh, which would lead to common analysis approaches. And we also might get crazy stuff like hints about what distributed systems patterns work better than other ones over time as a function of what software folks are using. So. There are, however, some important counter-arguments. So I guess the first one is companies wouldn't want to do this because they're kind of disclosing detailed records of their mistakes. Well, in some sense, that's a fair comment. 
In another sense, that is precisely what they do today, except they do it at differing levels of exposure. All of the major cloud providers publish public, uh, public facing postmortems. Uh, again, as I say, with uh, varying levels of detail. Uh, all of them do it as part of some kind of trust relationship, which they could improve by this. Another thing is, or another point, objection, is that companies don't really have the time to do anything sophisticated with their postmortems. And so they just publish a thing. It's easier for them to publish a thing and let it escape, and that's fine. The difficulty is that actually behind the scenes, I guarantee you that postmortems already go through multiple levels of review of all kinds before they are exposed to the outside world. So we could replace those multiple levels of review with a common set of multiple levels of review and make it easier for everyone. It seems uh, at least that converting to a common format would lower the total number of steps necessary for everyone to do across the industry. For those companies uh, truly without the time to do anything here, we should have a schema, post-mortem schema, that accommodates the idea of essentially just releasing the, the default, uh, the, the least possible detail in order to be a consortium member. But we would strongly encourage people to uh, enter that detail. And you say, Postmortems are hugely social documents with all kinds of things going on about organizational change, etc. A standardized format for anything this variable is kind of bonkers. Well, it's an important objection, but if we don't have some kind of standards, we get what we see today, which I think, hopefully you agree, is broadly unsatisfying, and some kind of standardized format would help us to raise the base level. So, having a talk about how this might work. So, fairly obviously, something like this is going to need a neutral identity. We would also have to sort out joining and unjoining procedures, all of that kind of stuff that you do when you start up any new organization, and agree on the basic principles. But my idea for the core issue, which is what the rights and obligations of membership would be, is that to join, the obligation is, is that you submit, you contribute. It's a contributor culture like open source. You have to agree to do this on a regularly scheduled period or maybe triggering once there's an event, et cetera. The way that the, the people working on this, I would argue, should do this is by a donation of time model from the people who are interested within the organizations themselves. Uh, let's not bury ourselves in complicated details earlier on. Now, conversely, in the rights, you're doing the obligations, what are your rights? So, we would have access to the data, the consortium members, perhaps at some, uh, for some period of time before the public gets hold of it so we can learn from each other and then decide what the appropriate thing is to let uh, escape to the outside world. Unlimited access to the search engine, the rest of the world will be ACL'd or rate limited or something. And possibly also, while we're in the initial stages and trying to build critical mass, we would agree to establish a trust relationship between ourselves before the critical mass is established uh, and before uh, everything gets going. Now. A couple of other points on how this might work. I think from a, a corpus management point of view, fairly obviously data storage isn't a problem. Considering the things that we store in the cloud already, this is not going to be a problem. Uh, cross cloud replication, etc. cetera, uh, no issue. We would, however, for every consortium member, uh, need a process for retrospective addition of old postmortems, where that was considered appropriate by the member in question. Again, uh, given the network effects of a common format for storing things or for uh, structuring things, we would need 
to, util to gain maximum benefit out of this, we would need to take the old postmortems and refactor those as well as adjust the in-member process for releasing a postmortem to incorporate the export step. Uh, the nice thing about this is that, again, with the common, common format, we could have tooling authored by consortium members in order to help this. And we could have an on-demand or, or triggered, uh, uh, incident triggered way of, of doing this with some time guarantees. It will be at most one week, or it will be at most some duration of time before the postmortem is released. That itself is a useful guarantee. I was talking earlier about researchers and the fact that this corpus of data is incredibly valuable in terms of understanding human factors, organizational layout, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Knowledge management in the broadest sense about this corpus of data and what we're doing is something we'd need to understand how to take full advantage of. So we would obviously need a venue to discuss uh, the documents, evolution, uh, evolve the schema, uh, the processes, and so on. And we'd probably also need to meet every so often in person because this is all about trust and transparency. And uh, I'm told uh, by my management colleagues that apparently turning up face to face every so often is useful. Uh, and also the consortium needs an operations function so that it can write postmortems about itself, which I think you'll all agree is the ultimate aim of uh, every, everything. Uh, and uh, we'd also need to have uh, a agreed upon thing that will happen when, for whatever reason, we wind the consortium up. And my default proposal would be to release all the postmortems, the structured ones, like not the internal ones, and the format of the public domain so people can just run with this if they want to. Now, so it's actually not super important. Uh, and it's only a, a draft thing, but there's an aka.ms link to a proposed schema and API there. Have a look. The slides will be up at the end of the day, or not the end of the day, they'll be up soon. Uh, and uh, you can have a look at that at your heart's content. But really, the call to action is, uh, do you agree? Think it might be good? Who knows? Well, talk to me if you're interested. Maybe. Uh, queue up, or sorry, not queue up, but maybe uh, microphones can be uh, pushed in your direction. Microphone, microphone, singular, can we, be pushed. We in have your time direction. for one question because we're running over a little bit. So, uh, who, who wants to ask the one question? So, how do we get this started? How many interested companies are you? Maybe here is one at least. Uh, Excellent. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty sure I can get one company to sign up. Uh, think we're all right there. Uh, and I have a suspicion that a number Let's of them Let's have three, would... at least, to have consensus. OK. Well, please reach out, email me, Twitter me, et cetera. We'll get something together. I hope in person here for the people who are interested. Uh, talk to me. All right, thank you very much.